Get ready to get uncorked. It's a new kind of show. Starring me, Cindy Ashton. With special guest, Andrea Payne. Live from the streets of Laguna Beach. This is Cindy Uncorked. Cindy. Cindy. What are you doing with the camera? We still got one more show to do. What do you mean we still want more? Blah, blah, blah. We want one more show to do. Yeah. Honey, I'm like already retiring and relaxing. What is this shit? One more Cindy Uncorked. Let's get to it. Oh. Okay, so what's today's show about? So I believe that we have Andrea Payne coming on. She's all about managing politics in the workplace. And then Dr. Nathalie Beauchamp is coming on. <laughs> We're cracking up. Sorry, everyone. I've got friends in the background. I'm, I'm having a spa party and they're laughing at me. All right, so we've got Janet Wise coming up. So if you feel like you want to do a side hustle and you're working full time, she's going to give you a skinny on how to. Of course, we've got our celebrities and Dr. Natalie Beauchamp. She's going to talk to you right now about if your thyroid is messing with your weight. So you go get in court. Do you have fun? I'm going to go back to my line and my mask and look all purified. Wellness Uncorked is brought to you by Dr. Nathalie Beauchamp. Is your thyroid messing with your weight? Find out now. Do you recognize this scenario? You watch what you eat, work out five times a week, but your waistline just keeps getting bigger. You're tired no matter how much you sleep. You're cold all the time, your hair's falling out, you're often constipated, and your brain always seems to be foggy. You go to the doctor and get your thyroid tested, but each time your test results come back normal. You couldn't be more frustrated. You know something is wrong with your thyroid. It's got to be. Why else would you be struggling with these symptoms? You're most likely right, and something is probably wrong with your thyroid. More than 12% of the U.S. population will develop a thyroid condition during their lifetime, and up to 60% of those with thyroid disease are unaware of their condition. The thyroid is the master gland of your metabolism and works with a whole team of glands to keep your body running smoothly. And when it comes down to, if your thyroid isn't functioning well, neither are you. People who are exposed to toxins such as radiation, chemicals, or harmful pesticide and pollutant on a regular basis are more at risk for developing thyroid disease. If you suspect that your thyroid gland may be sluggish, ask to get tested, but do realize that most routine blood tests only test for TSH, which for optimal function should be under two. The issue with only measuring TSH is that you're not getting the full picture of your thyroid function. A full thyroid blood panel should include free T4, free T3, reverse T3, and thyroid antibody to assess central and peripheral thyroid function, as well as thyroid autoimmunity. What can you do to help your thyroid function better? Eat the colors of the rainbow to make sure that you're getting the most nutrients out of your food. Your thyroid needs zinc, selenium, iodine to function optimally. Consider taking a high-grade multivitamin and mineral formula to cover all your bases. Learn to manage stress, as high levels of the stress hormone cortisol can cause TSH levels to appear normal on test. Cortisol can also reduce the level of the active thyroid hormone T3. Try to eliminate exposure to toxic metals and environmental pollutants as they can affect thyroid hormone production. Use botanical adaptogen such as ashwagandha or goggle extract, no, not Google, goggle, as they can both be very effective to balance your thyroid. Consider these tips to help make your thyroid happier. All right, ladies, right now, I want you to tweet me and tell me how you are planning on reducing toxins in your environment for optimal thyroid function. Be sure to get Dr. Beauchamp's free gift, a complete health and lifestyle self-evaluation and the ebook Toxin Overload. Discover how toxins may be disrupting your hormones and preventing you from reaching a healthy weight. Go to wellnessuncorked.com. Now it's time for Live from the Streets. Well, <laughs> Laguna Beach. Do you think that women have a hard time asking for what they want in the workplace and why? I can't speak for women, but just from 
my vantage point, it seems like it's more difficult for women than men to get higher up in the workplace. I think there's more, more obstacles to overcome. I think so, they do, because it's always a man-driven enterprise. Yes and no. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily women, just depending on the individual. I know there's plenty of you know confident, strong-minded women out there who have no problem asking for what they want, but then there's also individuals who do feel uncomfortable, and I think that's just your personality type. Absolutely. Um, I think that if you speak up and you speak out in a meeting, you're considered a bitch. That's historically how, how it's been because we're judged much more on how we look than our achievements. I think with a lot more women being more independent and a little bit more sure of themselves, that they're really starting to ask for what they want. So uh, I think that in the workplace, I think there is a difference, but I think it's a societal difference. Uh, I would say so, yeah. I mean, I agree a lot with what Courtney said. Um, I do feel that there's probably more women that are afraid to ask or for what they want than men, potentially. I mean, I, I wouldn't know. I work in an all-male workplace, so. <laughs> it should be an equal, equal thing. And I, I think if uh, a woman should ask for a, a raise that's the same as an equal as a man, I think they should get it. Yeah. Politics in the workplace. This is a really, really big topic that a lot of women struggle with. How do I manage it? But today we have a special, special guest. Her name is Andrea Plain. And what's great about her is that she truly is an expert. She's finishing up her PhD from Pepperdine and her master's at Harvard. And she's really an expert in global leadership and the corporate culture and does consulting in that area. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm so happy that you're here. <laughs> so what are some of the challenges that women are facing in the workplace today? Okay, they're not able to speak up whenever they feel like they there's a problem in the workplace. Right. And so how does that translate if they're not speaking up? Well, they're really not able to get the promotions that they deserve. And if they see that there's a serious problem, they're just quiet, just like they were in the classroom as a child. Interesting. So they're not able to get the promotions, which means they can't get the pay. They're not letting their ideas be heard. And so why do you think that, they're, that that's happening? Well, really, this has happened all the way back to in grade school. Right. That as the studies show, the teachers just did not you know, told them to be quiet when they were a child. Yeah. And they really, when they raised their hand, they re they really were drawing on the boys more. They, they said, hey, you know, what do you, you know, they really were drawing on the boys or just said, hey, you know, let me talk to the boys more in classroom. So do you think that's a conscious thing that a teacher goes, oh, I'm gonna pick more boys and girls? Actually, I think the boys are just more assertive in the classroom. The oh, statistics that's show that, or the research shows that. Statistically, boys are more assertive in the classroom than girls. Well, that's really interesting. And so even in today's society, do you think that even today, boys and girls are being raised in a way where women or the little girls are not able to speak up as much as the boys? Actually, I, I believe that the girls are just more shy and we're brought up to be more shy. We play tea, we go out, we don't go out and play and run around. We're, we're pretty. And, and, and the girls are just gonna sit down, be more timid. We read more, which is great. We're more right. educated more, but right. it takes us longer when in our 20s to be more assertive. And right. there's workshops now that train us to be more assertive, more confident. So it's gonna take us longer to get those promotions. Right, and so what do you think are some of the other politics that's happening in the workplace? Well, the more, the politics in the workplace can be, uh, there can be, a, there's what they call water cooler talk. Water cooler talk? <laughs> That's water cooler talk, I wonder. Well, the, yeah. it could just be a little uh, break room talk, you know, where the men have that and the women don't. Okay, or <laughs> if they do, it could become catty. It can be catty. And uh, right. that's not good. Uh, <laughs> the, the rumor mill is what they call right. it. That, that's not good politics. But also can be sometimes where you just get together and you talk about things, which can be good. And the men do that. And the women just sit at their desk and just keep working and become the worker bees. Right. So again, it goes back to it's like, I'm going to get a promotion if I just work really hard, whereas the men are more social and actually taking initiative. Yes. Interesting. Now, I remember when we had a conversation um, the other day, you were talking about that they move across instead of up or they move out instead of up. What, tell us about that concept of because they're not speaking up, they're moving across or they're moving out instead of up. 
Yeah, that means that they're actually just leaving the job and they're getting other positions out there right. in corporate America, but that's a lateral move, which I call as a crossed or within the corporation like, oh, well, I don't like my boss. Let me just move within the corporation. That's a lateral move. Let me yeah. find another supervisor. But that doesn't help you if you're getting the same pay. Right. And and the men are going ahead and, and asking for the promotion or asking for more positions within the corporation. So this is very interesting, this whole concept of moving out instead of up. So really, because they're not speaking up and they're working really hard and they're not feeling like they're getting the jobs that they want to get, suddenly they're feeling like, well, they don't appreciate me, so I'm just going to go and get another job. But then they go in this perpetual cycle of doing lateral moves instead of, and they're not really dealing with a deeper issue of learning how to step up and ask. Yes, and a lot of times women will use other women socially and they have friends outside, they'll ask for other positions, but they won't do it with inside the corporation. Isn't that interesting? So Andrea, let me ask you this then, why is it that women don't speak up? We understand the cultural and the way that we were raised, but why are they afraid to speak up? Well, women, they feel like they're causing trouble in the workplace, they're oh, a troublemaker. Because they, they don't wanna cause trouble at all. And they think they're gonna get a trouble at home also. They, they really want to be the peacemakers. They're peacemakers oh. at home. And they've been peacemakers since they were children, right. really. Right. And they always want to make peace at home. They think, I'm going to get in trouble by my husband and in trouble with my children. So they really want to keep the peace and keep it even kill also. Right. Studies have shown that women are the peacemakers. Yeah. And you know, and I can see that if they're afraid that if they get in trouble, does that mean I'm gonna lose my job? Does it mean I'm not gonna be able to provide for my family? Is it gonna be hard for me to find a new job? I, like all those fears are coming up in their head that's holding them back from really speaking their truth and really holding their power. I'm really curious to see why men don't have problems with this and you're gonna explain that after the break as well as how women really can step up into their power and ask. So after the commercial break, we will see you then for Andrea's um, answer. And of course, we have life in the streets and let's see our people get uncorked. I know you. Like me, you're a socially conscious entrepreneur, already creating a legacy in your business, living what you believe in and nothing will stop you. Except having a web presence that's just meh, okay. The world needs to see your work, your passion, your gift. Let's show it to them. I'm Michelle Emson and together we will build a digital platform that will be the foundation for your business growth. I did this for cindyuncork.com and I want to do it for you. So visit me today at sanctuary-studios.net and let's get started. Do you think it's easier for men or women to climb the corporate ladder and why? I think it is uh, the relationship that you, you know, establish at work and hard work you put in and sooner or later I believe that it is recognized and I don't think any gender has uh, advantage over others. I think depends on the person you know some people are more apt to be up front and you know crawl their way up but some maybe that are shy well like I say again uh, because it's I think every person is qualified for the position and I think uh, both are qualified to do uh, the job that's uh, are asked for of them and I, you know I think a woman can do the same job as, as a man yes I think that unfortunately I think things are still male dominated. Um, I think that has more to do with availability though. I've found a struggle in that, you know, there's more competition I think for women. In fact, they have to prove themselves more often than men do. I mean, I think you already know my answer, but men, absolutely. Um, women are still not paid as much as men for the work that we're doing, equal pay for equal work. Well, men, because it's a male-based society and because we have children and bear children and we have a different way of thinking and it's just that's historically how it's been. I think it's, uh, it's a good question. <laughs> and we're back. So men don't have problems with this. So what's the difference between men and women? Tell us. Well, men are powerful, they're just more powerful. They feel like they can go to the boss's office, knock on the door, and they will just ask for that promotion. Yeah. They'll ask for lunch. They, they will say, hey, can I have five minutes of your time? Will you give it to me? And right. they'll say, sure, no problem. 
Can you get? Can you give me the promotion? And they'll ask for more money than women. Oh, they always do. You know, it's really interesting. In all my years of coaching, I've coached a lot of speakers who are and coaches who are male and female. And here's what I always find. If I have a starting out coach that's female, she'd be like, oh, okay, so should I maybe charge $50 an hour? But then I'll have a male coach right out of school, no experience to say, yeah, I was thinking I should do my three month programs for $5,000. And I'm like, whoa, they just have that automatic confidence. You know, it's really, really interesting that they just have that confidence. Whereas women, they, they d dance around it and is it okay? Yeah. Yes, yes, and that's where they're more timid, they're shy, and huh. I do believe that they need the workshops. For they sure. They need to learn how to come out of their shell sometimes. Yeah, and ask and hold their power. Yes. So give us a few strategies of how women can step up and start playing those politics in the workplace in a really positive and authentic way and own their power. Yes, and I, I think this can be taught, a li taught in the workshops, but there are a few strategies. For example, they can make a list. What do they want, seriously want out of their company? And that list can be come in and, and, and uh, basically, um, what is the problems that they see out of the corporation? In other words, this can be brought to the management, their first level management. In other words, this can be, you know, I want them to see me see me as right. an important person. So it's like, hi, I really, I, I, I'm so excited to be here and this is something that I've seen that could be improved and we can really boost our bottom line this way, blah, blah, blah. So they're really taking that initiative. So it's really about making a list and being willing and being and seeing those problems and being able yes. to use those as a catalyst to be seen. Yes. Cool. And absolutely, the, the first level supervisor or the management will give them probably a project to take on. Right. Which will probably give them a promotion to the next step. And that's bigger pay and more security for the family and themselves? Yes. Love it. More strategies. Give us a little yes. bit more. The next strategy I would say is ask the management for lunch. If they cannot give you lunch, then ask them for five or 10 minutes of your time. Right. Uh, I would say- Hang out at the water cooler. <laughs> And the water cooler is usually the break room is what we call the water cooler. Right. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, get to meet people, you know, that, that, that's what that means. Get to know some yeah. of your, some of your group, you know, take a little bit of a break. Women tend to not take breaks. Right. Okay. They work, work, work through everything. Worker bee. <laughs> <laughs> the worker bee. Yeah. And my next strategy is be persistent. Be persistent. I love it. Okay. And the next thing is look at the website and see what is missing in the company. It could be missing the mission statement, the vision statement. What are they lacking? And that's why I say find the gap that the company is missing yeah. and bring those problems up. I that's love it. That's the list. And you know, and just going back to the worker bee to tie this all together is that when you're doing a worker bee, people are like, oh great, the work's getting done, but they don't think of you as anything other than a worker bee. But if you're taking the initiative to go to lunch with a boss or be at the water cooler and hang out and take those breaks, you're, you're not being lazy. They're not going to see you as anything less. If anything, you're going to be seen and heard. And it's really about what I hear you saying is about taking that, being strategic about it being strategic and on a daily basis, going after and doing something that makes you more visible. Yes, and when you're at those positions of the break room, you could, you could meet other supervisors that might need your help and find other projects. Love it. That's great. <laughs> so, Andrea, where can people hire you to speak and or be a consultant? At andreapainconsulting.com. I love it. Great. Thank you so much for being with us. Hopefully all of you are feeling a little more empowered about stepping up and asking. You could do it. Go get them, tiger. <laughs> Career Uncorked is brought to you by Janet Wise. I have products and services that are great for corporate. How do I connect with the decision makers inside an organization? A lot of my clients come to me because they're looking for an opportunity to engage themselves with a lifestyle career. That means they're not quite ready to walk away from their nine to five, but they want to begin building that bridge to a dream job. There are several ways to approach this. Tip number one, check out your competition. What are they offering? And more importantly, what are they not offering that your expertise can fill? You can do this through a number of ways. The easiest is Google them. 
what's out there. And when you're looking at them, not looking at them from the standpoint of the market being saturated, but instead as a way of telling yourself that there is a viable market for similar products and services. Look how you can fill that need. Tip number one, know your competition. What are they offering that you can offer? And more importantly, what are they missing that you can offer and fill an additional need for? Consider Googling your area of expertise or product or service. If there are a lot of search results coming back, that's an excellent thing. Don't think of it in terms of market saturation. Instead, let it encourage you that there really truly is a market out there for what you can offer. My next tip is all about networking. Find in your area those network groups that are catering to entrepreneurs and startups. You know, there's a Chinese proverb that says, to know the road ahead, ask those coming back. Get yourself a seat at that table and learn quickly. Tip number three, build a personal board of advisors. Now look, at this stage, it's unlikely that we're looking at a paid board. Tip number three, build a personal board of advisors. Now, I'm not talking about a paid board of advisors, at least not at this stage. What I am talking about is surrounding yourself with like-minded, success-minded individuals, those who can support and encourage you. And I'm really not talking about your BFF unless she generally has your best interest at heart. Look for those individuals who have the motivation to succeed. You'll be juggling two jobs. You're going to need the organizational skills and the stamina and the insights to keep you moving forward in your endeavor. And the final tip, be kind to yourself. You don't know what you don't know in this new endeavor. I find this to be particularly challenging for a lot of my clients. We're used to success in corporations, but we have to understand that there's gonna be a steep and heavy learning curve when we step onto an entrepreneurial stage. My final caveat, before you begin any of this, ensure that you have either a non-compete or a conflict of interest with your employer so that you can avoid any potential legal issues. All right, everyone, tweet me and let me know what do you want to do with your side hustle? Be sure to download Janet's free guide on personal branding at wiseadvantages.com. Next up, we have getting uncorked on the red carpet. So here we are on the red carpet. We've got Celeste Thorson. Um, question for you. We'd love for you to get uncorked. Our TV show is all about helping people to step their power. So what is your number one piece of advice for somebody who is going after their dreams? Meditation. You gotta get zen about it. You know, you gotta just get centered and know what you want. You know, I think that's a very important thing to stay grounded. Oh, I love that. You're so grounded. You can hear it in your voice. It's so open and grounded in your presence. So, great advice, everybody. Thank you so much. All right, have a great evening. Thank you. All right, everybody. Sitting on court here with a fabulous Forbes Riley. So, Forbes, we're gonna get you to get on court. You ready, girl, girl? Oh, you know I am. I'm always. I'm born on court. <laughs> Does that mean we can drink the wine? Um, yeah, we can drink the wine. Anything else you want to drink tonight? <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't drink alcohol. Actually, right. neither do I. I don't. I don't have a TV show called Cindy and Forge, and I don't really drink that much. Go. Let's have a glass of wine. All right. So we have a question for you. What is you, know, you are like the fitness guru of the fitness world, taking it over. So I got tell us what is your number one advice for our audience? Yeah. How to step into the group and make yourself love yourself. Okay. So one of the greatest ways to simply start saying that you're not. Exactly. If I asked you that question, say your name. Cindy Ashton. Say I'm an adult and I'm fabulous and I'm really young. Yeah, but I didn't ask you to say all this. I asked you to say enough. I'll tell you what. Oh, it's a very she's going to task me. I love it. I am. Because she's going to task me. Say it, girl. Come on. Here's the thing. I don't want you to have to prove that you're not. I want us to say that you are something else. Because the truth is we're never pretty enough, young enough, skin enough, or rich enough. But we need to believe that this guy, we are. And a lot of what understanding that you are. The other thing is this. It's kind of like strange. This one is bling, and I know it's kind of cute and sexy. Oh, hello, we are all about cute and sexy. This one? Um, no, I'm going to do it right now. Right, so, so, no, no, Audra's going to hold this for us. Right, so, we're going to let her do a little spin gym action. I'm going to show you what happens when someone puts it for the first time on a red carpet. Give me your thumbs. All right. And all I want you to do is right here is a gorgeous neck, a gorgeous gap. Just go in and out. Everybody stretch now. <laughs> <laughs> I've never. Oh! Yeah, I've never 
I've never seen anyone do it like that. Straighten your arms. Straight. Oh, I'm sorry. Straight, straight I'm like a dancer. Straight, straight, straight like Superwoman. Straight like Superwoman. Hello. Hello. Um, this is Superwoman. Oh, she's a tough one. I adore you. Cool spark. Straighten those arms. Yes. Two. Nine. Eight. Six. First of all, your boots are popping out of your dress. And this makes really good talent. So let me ask you a question. Do you know body vibration? Um, my vagina's this vibrating. One, like, oh my god, is this on cable? Is that so much chubby right No, now? you're not. This is on cable. This is on cable. So, 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 so we can see even better words than that. Yeah, we can. I had a whole body shaming episode where I almost didn't just show my scars and to show how much I love my scars. I love All right, so season two of Cindy Uncorked is done. And so is my mask. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm going to be purified and everything right now. Anyways, I've got to go back to my wine. I'm almost done. And hang out with my girlfriends. Hi, girls. Yeah, we're doing the girl thing. All right, here I go, everybody. I can't wait to see you in season three. So in the meantime, get on the car.